Hey guys, it's Ed. This week we have the long-awaited finale of our DIY CNC turret lathe build. Spoiler alert, it actually works. All we have to machine this week are these brackets for the spindle. Then it's just final assembly and setup. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Now, those of you who follow us more closely on other social media will probably know by now that we've went with injection molded rubber plugs for our fixture plates. That ended up being a better idea than these magnetic hard plugs. But since we were so close to being finished with this lathe, we really wanted to see it through and at least get the core machine functional. However, for the time being, it doesn't make sense for us to finish out accessories like the bar feeder or the metal insert feeder assemblies. Down the road, if we find another use for this machine, that could easily happen though. Onto those spindle brackets. Somewhat older footage, so our taping technique's a little bit different here, uh, but still works great. Most of the improvements we've made relate to things like steel and flood coolant. Card here to the NYC CNC site for more details on this technique and all of the supplies that we are currently using. Here I'm using a shim made out of three layers of tape to account for the two layers of tape and the layer of glue between the part and fixture. And whatever you do, do not forget to take out these dowel pins. Now we're using a 5 16 free flute variable flute end mill from Lakeshore Carbide to slot these parts out pretty aggressively with a contour toolpath infusion. Running at 7500 RPM, 10 thou per tooth, which works out to be 200 inches per minute in your ramp feed rate. And under the linking tab in our ramp section, we have 10% tool diameter as our maximum ramp step down. 10% seems to work really well across the board when doing this kind of operation from larger end mills like this all the way down to 16th of an inch and smaller. Then finishing with a little bit smaller quarter inch through flute, variable flute, lakeshore carbide. Still at max RPM, but this time only one and a half thou per tooth for better surface finish. Nice heavy chamfer, complement of my beloved 3 8 inch 4 flute spiral flute chamfer mill. Throwing a draw stop on the vise just so I don't have to reindicate that next identical part. Laziness is efficiency.
here using a longer version of our standard quarter inch aluminum end mill from Lakeshore Carbide to make some counter bores for the mounting holes. Again, this is a contour with a ramping lead in strategy from Fusion. Then chamfering these using a 3 8 ball mill and a scallop toolpath. This is a projected 3D toolpath, which we are containing by modeling the chamfer as we want it in Fusion and selecting the inner and outer edges of that as our geometry. Also had to whip up a quick little spacer block just to put the center line of the spindle at the right level for the turret. One of the features of the mod vise that I really love is this ability to carefully pick your clamp positions so you can get around odd sized parts like this. Big shout out to our buddy Tyson Lamb for recommending these Weira Hex Plus Allen wrenches. They've been fantastic. They have a special head design that so far doesn't want to strip out on us like all the others we've tried. And the color coding has really came in handy. Next, doing the upper halves of those spindle brackets, just about the same process. You'll notice it slows down quite a bit on the tight radii there. Not sure exactly why that is. I'm trying to solve that issue, so if you guys have any ideas or suggestions, let us know. Thank you. 
Clearance is clearance, Clarence. Now we can mount the spindle and sweep along the outside of the housing to indicate its center line true to the Z travel of the machine. Oh yeah, bro, we indicate. That's what I'm talking about. Anymore, whenever I need a custom pulley, rather than order one and bore it out to the right size, I'll just print it on the Mark Forged. And a few hours later, it's in my hand. It is best to indicate any 3D printed pulleys just to make sure they don't have the weeble wobbles, but not a big deal, especially for a V-belt. Time at last to install the motor in this thing which means we're gonna have to get it up on some legs and make some room for that. Half inch acrylic ended up being a great choice for everything in the undercarriage of the machine. I cut that out using our boss laser. Card to our video on that machine here. Fun fact, this is the motor out of John's very first Tag mill back from the New York City apartment days. Slots in the motor mounting plate allow us to easily adjust belt tension by just pushing down a little bit on there before tightening things up. And of course, safety fourth, gotta have a belt guard. Now that the machine is working and moving all on its own, let's walk through the cycle again and talk about some of the immediate takeaways from seeing it actually work. Normally, if we had a bar feeder here, every time the bar was fed, that would trigger the cycle to begin. Since we don't have that, I have made it so that the X homing switch doubles as a cycle start switch just for demonstration purposes. First up, the form tool shapes the outer profile of the plug. I would definitely add pecking to every cutting motion of this machine just to break the chips up and make them easier to clear, as well as probably an air blast downward to the vacuum hole in the bottom of the X cross light plate. If this machine were to be put into long-term production, I think the combination of these three things would do a great job of keeping those chips clear. Next, drilling, which some people had doubts about, myself included. The concern was that the somewhat unconstrained Z carriage would want to self-feed as it was drilling. But so far it seems to work just fine. Now, insert the ball bearing to make these plugs magnetically removable. For this little demonstration, I'm just using a magnet to hold the ball at the end of the plunger. But the completed machine would have a feeder and hopper assembly as seen here. And inserting the support bar for parting off. Here I realized we don't want that combination bar feed stop part stripper. Instead, we also want this support bar to be magnetic so it carries the finished part away from any messy chippy area where it can be collected other ways. This is a really fun, interesting project, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it kicked my butt. It took so much longer, so much more work and design than I ever imagined it possibly could for a simple little lathe. So yeah, bear that in mind when designing machine tools from scratch, it's hard. But if you do want to take the plunge, card here to the NYCC and C page on this project where you can find the F3D file including all design and cam data required to build your own DIY CNC turret lathe. That's it for this week. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.